Hello everyone. So today we're going to be doing some advanced texturing. Now, uh, before I carry on, I just wanted to say that I'm still in the midst of recovering my voice from a cold. So if I do sound weird, it is because of that. So don't fret. Uh, I might cough halfway through the recording because, again, because of the cold. So anyways let's get started so today i'm going to show you some advanced texturing techniques using oil pastels now they're advanced because it uses combinations of india to get some different results make it look different okay so now i have here a piece of drawing paper uh, from the drawing block so you see some shapes being drawn here already on purpose. So I'm going to lay down some colors on these two squares first, same colors. And then I'm going to explain what's going on later. Okay, so I'm going to use red. Now, uh, you want a very thick layer, especially two layers. So I'm going to lay down the color first. And then let it dry a, like a few minutes before putting down another layer because I need a pretty thick application for this technique to show up. Okay. So, and I'm purposely not coloring right up to the line. I'm going to leave like a very tiny little border. Now, as you know, because oil pastels are pretty thick, so they can get pretty difficult to do fine details, which is why I'm leaving a little border around it. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to be able to use it. So, okay, I'm going to let this dry for a bit before continuing. One of the squares is going to be for comparison purposes and the other one is going to be where the effect is going to be, okay? Where the effect is going to be. Yeah, I just lost my voice a little bit there. Okay, so now with this portion here, I am going to show you a technique called Scraffito. Huge area. So you can see. Okay, so I think I've shown this technique in re during my oil pastel review. So today I'm going to show you in a bigger sense in this piece of paper. Okay, so to maximize use of time, I am going to also color in this piece of paper. This, this area here. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to do, it can be any random color that you want, and then I'll show you a technique, but make sure the colors on your first layer should be like a pretty light layer, like light colors, not darker colors, but lighter colors because you want a darker layer on top. So I'm going to do okay, You can have any number of colors that you want and in any random order it doesn't have to be you know, blend really nicely but in this case I 
do want some blending involved. Like I want some color, kind of color blending, not really finger blending, kind of. Okay, I'll talk less now. All right, so you see this whole mess of colors, okay? So we're not gonna mess with that right now. Again, we're gonna let it dry. Now, with this circle here, I'm gonna show you a technique that's adopted from Scorpido, and I am going, you will see. Again, because I'm laying down the colors right now so that uh, I can let it dry. Alright. Okay, so I'm going to let it dry now for a couple of hours before coming back because I don't want the bottom layer to mix with the top layer, the colors. All right, so I'll see you in a bit. Oops, I think I forgot to start recording before I showed you this. So in any case, what I did was it's been about three hours now, okay, so, and what I did was I colored another layer on here, not on this, on this side, so there's like two layers of the same colors, and then you can use a tool like this, this is an embossing tool, or you can try finding the back of a brush like a really cheap brush. This is like a really cheap children's brush that's really small. We can use like a double zero or number one or number two, really fine brush, you know, and then the back of it, you can use it. And what you do is you just start drawing lines. So I did diagonal lines like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna crisscross it. And this method, was shown to me by an artist who does a lot really nice lollipop trees in grid form and this is what she did okay and then after that you go over it with watercolor now normally you don't go over oil pastels with watercolor because they don't stick okay but for this reason for this case not this reason this case we actually want to go over it with watercolor okay so I'm gonna use my water brush now and then I'm gonna get some brown color yep. okay and go over this it's not gonna stick but you just want to lather over it like lay it on So you just want to get it on everything, it doesn't matter if it doesn't stick, okay? You want to get it on the whole thing. And then, what you do is you take 
piece of kitchen towel, like so, and then blot it up. And because I use the brown color, you are going to see some of the pigments stuck to it like this. And then you're going to see like all the ridges and everything. And this is what the technique creates. Okay. Now if you, I'll, I'll show you one with a wider bridge here. Like if I don't put anything on, probably won't be able to tell the difference. Okay, you see, this is a new ridge that I just made and the color is different. You can tell. Okay, so and then you can compare this. It's like, this looks very, very much more textured than this. Alright, now don't expect the watercolor to stick. Okay, because it will not. It won't stick totally but some of it will stick okay and that's what we want and you can tell the difference already between a fresh one I made that doesn't have any watercolor on it and then the ones that have you can already tell the difference all right so this is this is the technique for this texture texturing technique with watercolor all right so next we come to the graffito technique now this has been like drying for like about three hours as i've mentioned before that's why i did it before so we are going to put a fresh layer of a really dark color over this entire area okay so i'm going to use like a really dark blue hang on let me turn on the light there we go okay this really dark blue oh under this lighting you can see this better Okay. All right, so we start. And the reason why we want to uh, let it dry for about a few hours at the very least is because we don't want the color to mix as much. When it's fresh, the colors would mix because it is oil pastel and when it's a bit drier it doesn't mix as much so this is our second layer oil pastel Some of it is still mixing because it's not completely dry. But for this demonstration purpose, it's fine. Alright, I think that's good enough. Just cover up all the white dots. Okay. So for this, 
You want either a toothpick or you want either a toothpick or a flathead screwdriver. Okay. So the difference is the flathead screwdriver will give you some variation in lines as you do curves and a toothpick is just going to be fine lines all the time. Okay, let me show you. This is the flathead screwdriver. And I'm going to do this. Just wipe the excess off. Okay. And then if you draw circles, It's not a really nice circle, but you get the idea. And then you want to do roundings and do it here as well. So this gives you ideas for neurographic art, which is one of the reasons why I'm showing you this technique. Okay, so I'm not going to do all the roundings, but you get the idea of what, what's possible with this technique. Now, with this technique, given that not everyone draws neurographic art and some of you are coming here, try and learn new techniques on doing coloring neural trees and such and that comes this this circle was done as a base layer again earlier i showed you how i do this base layer with blending and everything now i'm going to put another dark layer over this I'm going to try and get a clean line. All right, so you do need a sharp object. So I'm going to use a toothpick this time. Oh yeah, before I use the toothpick to show you how to do this, I'm going to show you how, what kind of line the toothpick makes. Alright, so it makes like Consistent, really sharp lines. Okay, so now back to the circle. So what am I alluding to this? This is what I intend to do. I'm going to...
So this is what you can do with this graffito technique for textures. This, this can be the fruit of your tree or your resource or in your trunk, okay? That's why I teach you this graffito technique. This graffito technique, you can actually do it on an entire sheet of paper and you can draw neurographic art with just this. And then on top of that, you can also make a resource, a fruit or whatever with this technique like that. You just need to remember that bottom layer, the color in the bottom layer needs to be lighter than the color on the top layer. So the top layer always has to be a darker color. It takes a bit of planning and you need to know some of the principles of blending to be able to get some really nice gradients at the bottom. Okay, I've sh already shown you the techniques of how to do blending to get that. And that's why I use the yellow, white, blue, and purple because I know that that gives a really nice blending. Okay, you can do your, you know, creativity. And then after that, you just need to clean up by picking up all these little bits, you know. Okay. Just need to take time to clean it off. Or you can just turn your paper and knock it. That will get rid of most of it. There. Okay. Now, let's go back to the very first technique that I showed you. Okay, now you can see the difference. See the color has dried and it's taken on a different hue than this one. It looks a little dirtier and it looks like it has texture on it. And it actually does have some 3D texture on it. Okay, so now you can get creative with this idea and do something with it. I mean, you can even combine this with this I've not done it. I'll have to think about how to do it. So if you're going to combine both watercolor on this technique here, you have to think about how you're going to combine it so that it looks good. Okay. All right. So I hope this has given you some more creative idea on how to use different mediums. Like what I'm doing here is mixed media. I used watercolor and oil pastel for this and purely oil pastel for this okay now for the scratching if you can't find either this or toothpick you can use a you can use a mechanical pencil as well i'll just put the lead in and just use the metal part scratch it or you can use a spent ballpoint pen. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to make a mark on the scruffito. Let's see. Yeah, you can. So you can even use the back of a brush to do this. So with that, I'm going to end the video here. And I hope you have fun with some of these techniques that I'm, I have taught you. And then we're going to wrap things up in the next few videos with some coloring videos okay like doing a full coloring of something I'm not gonna say what yet because i'm still planning and of course um i am kind of batch producing all these videos so you might still hear me hacking or away or having a weird voice because I'm still trying to recover from my lost voice okay from all the coughing and the cold and I will see you again in the next video bye